So good to see you here in worship on this morning. Let us bow our heads in just a quick moment of prayer. As we enter into the gates of our worship service, as we come into the church, we should not be remiss to thank God. Thank God again that you woke up this morning. Thank God again for sustaining you all through this week. There's witnesses here today of God's goodness, God's grace, and God's mercy even on today. And so just thank him right now for that. Thank him for, again, food on your table, clothing on your back. Thank him if you have a job. Thank him if you have an income. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. hallelujah. God has been so good. And so this is the time where we lift up our hands unto God and give God the praise. This is the time where we lift up our hands unto God and give him some worship today. We should worship him in what the Bible says, in spirit and in truth today. Because God has been good to us even on today. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift you up. We magnify your name, Father, because you've been so good. Here in worship today, Father, we want to set aside all the challenges that were on our minds. Set aside all of the things that would block us from feeling your glory today. Father, we know that you have a word to speak into our spirit. Father, we know that you have breakthroughs in our future. Father, we know that you've got healings in our future. And so we're going to walk forward by faith, God. Faith, knowing and believing, God, that you've got our back if we just follow your word and follow your way. Father, I pray for your people right now and help them to know that you will never leave them nor forsake them today, Father. We lift you up. We magnify you because we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from you. And because of that, God, we're going to give you all the praise. We're going to give you all the worship. And we are just going to give you all the honor on today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give him some praise one more time. Let's worship him today. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. Anybody excited this morning to be here? We're glad you're here this morning. Hallelujah. This morning we're going to let the Lord know how grateful we are by saying, Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Come on, choir. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good.
Come on, give God some praise today. Amen. How many of you don't want the Savior to pass you by? Why don't you stand with me today and let's just gather around for prayer. Feel free to come to the altar and just come to God today. We believe that God can do some supernatural things. He can do some powerful things in your life. But as the Bible says, you have to go to him in prayer. You've got to talk to him. You've got to tell him all about your struggles. The Bible teaches that we should ask boldly, believing without a second thought that God can. Yeah. Believing without a second thought that God will, God will deliver. I was driven to this verse this morning in James 1 through 5. It says, if you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. That's the good news I want to deliver to you. He actually wants to help you. He actually wants to deliver you. He actually wants to hear and answer your prayer. The Bible goes on to say you'll get his help. It won't be condescending to when you ask for it. Don't, don't be that way. Ask boldly, believing without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like wind whip waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Adrift at sea, keeping all your prayers and your options open to the Lord today. Will you bow your heads? Will you pray? Will you pray right now for our church? Continue to pray for our ministry. All that we're doing, all that God has asked us to do in 20 and 23. Pray for those that are on our sick and shut-in list as people call our church and they're going through struggles. We want God to have his way in their life. And it starts with your prayers. It starts with you believing that God can do some things and that God will do some things in their lives. Pray for your neighbor, even those that are around you right now. Pray for them. Even right now, as our choir comes and sings this song, let go and let God. Couldn't seem to fall asleep. Had so much on my mind. I was searching for that peace. For the peace I couldn't find. When I knelt down to pray, I was praying, help me please. Then he said, you don't have to cry. I'll supply all your needs. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the storm.
Heavenly Father, we just come before you, knowing today that when we let go and we let you have your way, that's when the breakthrough happened. When we let go and let you have your way, that's when the healing comes. When we let go and let you have your way, that's when the, the clarity comes today. So, Father, we ask that you would hear and answer our prayers today. You've heard the prayer of your people. You've heard the prayers of this church. And now we just stand in faith and believing that you're going to deliver. Yes. We believe, Father, that you may not always come at the time and the hour yes. that we want you to come. But, Father, you're always, and I do mean always, right on time. You were right on time in our past. You were right on time in our situation. Yes. Evidence of that is seen in the fact that we're still alive. Evidence is seen in the fact that we're still going. The evidence is seen. In the fact that when we get in our cars and when we get in our homes and when we even look in our bank accounts, we can say if it had not been for the Lord that was by our side, we don't know where we'd be today. So, Father, we just ask that you would hear our cries. Father, that you would hear our requests, knowing and believing that we are turning it over to the Lord. And we believe that when we turn it over to you, that you are going to make it all right. So make it all right right now, Father. Make it all right even in this moment. We believe in the name of Jesus that when we call upon your name, that you are going to make it all right. So we believe it. We claim it. We can go back to our seats with a sense of ease and knowing that it's already taken care of. It's already delivered. It's already been handed over to the Father. We're going to let go and let God have his way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise. Let go and let God. How's everybody doing this morning? Are you happy to be in God's house? Do I have any believers today? Say amen. Amen. So good to see you here today on this morning. We're so blessed that you're here for worship. I pray that your week goes better because you are here at worship. I pray even to those watching online that your week goes better because you're tuned into worship even on today. I want you again to look at your bulletin. Make sure that you're tuning into your bulletin. We'd love to give you updates on all of the things that are going on. We've given you some things of what we want to see happen in 2023. And those things will happen if you continue to pray with us. If you participate, if you show up and be with us, we'll be able to do some mighty and some marvelous things in 2023. So make sure you tune into your bulletin and see all of the great things that God is doing and God is going to do. Also wanted to share with you a ministry that we're doing in this season in the beginning of the year. We go to many uh, nursing homes and assistant living facilities, and there are some things, some items that some senior people, uh, they really look forward to our church bringing to them during this season. They love blankets, they love hats and gloves. Sometimes in their room in the facility, they get a little cold and, and the temperatures rise, of course, in this season. And so they look forward to Mount Zion giving them what we call blankets of blessings. Can somebody say, say this, say blankets of blessings. And we do that every single year. There's a barrel in the foyer. I'd love for you in the next couple of Sundays to get some blankets, hats, and gloves that we can give to seniors. We want to bless their lives. Of course, the church is going to provide some also, but we want you to provide along with us so that we can give together. And I want to ask you if you'd be willing to do that. Can somebody say amen? 
Amen. I hear you out in the congregation. I would love for you to join in. We try to do these different outreaches throughout the year, uh, quarterly, and seniors is what we're looking at and who we're looking at blessing. And trust me, they look forward to it. They're thankful for it. We even send cards sometimes where we give them an encouraging word. That's our way of reaching out and blessing others and being a blessing. And they'll say, you know what? That church in Mount Zion, they love somebody. They are being the light in a dark world. So I thank you to all of those in advance that are going to participate with us for Blankets of Blessings. But let's watch our ministry announcements and see all of the good things that God is doing here at Mount Zion. Join us in entering into 30 days of prayer between now and February. Designate a specific time and place to go into prayer with us. Pray for all areas of the church, including our continued mission, ministry, and impact during the pandemic. We are serving seniors. Outside of our daily feeding program, we now are working with local nursing homes in creating care packages with encouragement. We need your help. We will be delivering socks, gloves, hats, and blankets, and we want all of you to bring in cards of encouragement. You can drop them off on Sundays in the church foyer or during church office hours in the week. Let's be a blessing. Are you in need of a healing? Visit our healing room located in the educational wing. You can come in one at a time or as a family. There are instructions on healing and deliverance in the room for you to follow. Join us for Super Bowl Sunday on Wear Your Favorite Sports Team's Apparel. It's a fun time where we reflect on teamwork and rallying together around one main purpose, and that is to win for the Lord. Come relaxed and bring a friend. We thank all who support the vision of Mount Zion. If you attend church, tithe, volunteer, support, and share who we are to others, you are a partner in all that we do. We strive to save souls, help people, strengthen our communities, and are one of the healthiest investments people can make. We're a legacy church, not just here for ourselves, but the future generation. We look forward to a glorious future. Mount Zion, on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I want to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12, as we prepare ourselves for the giving time. As we give today, the Bible says we shouldn't give grudgingly, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. As we give today, it's about our obedience to God today. And so even in the first month of the year, what a great time to be a tither. What a great time to set the tone as we give today. We're going to read this text responsibly, our giving text. The Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now and herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I would not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God, thanking God for all of our resources, all that God has done for you and put food on your table, clothing on your back. There's so many blessings that God has blessed you with, seen and unseen. Thank God for even the unseen blessings. A lot of times God has protected us from so many things and it's good that we didn't even know what it was, but we know that we were under the protection of God. And that's what the Bible speaks of when it talks about not being up under the curse. We don't want to be up under the curse. We want to be up under the blessing. 
the blessings of God. And there's blessings that comes with your obedience. And as we give today in this special time of worship, this is an act of obedience. This is an act of following God's word and following God's way. And the great thing, it's a great equalizer as we tithe. It's according to what God has given us. It's not about what your neighbor gives. It's not about what your neighbor does. You know what God has blessed you with. And so that personal relation with God helps you to realize that if God gave me this, I should give this percentage back to God. And when I give, as the Bible says, the 10, 10 10% or more back to God, we know and believe that what we have left will go so much further. What we have left will be so much more blessed than if we had kept everything and hoarded everything for ourselves. It is better to give than to receive. Can somebody say the word give? There's blessings with giving. There's breakthrough with giving. There's a release when you give. And as we put it into God's hands, we know and believe that God is going to put some things in our hands. And the great thing is that God always gives more. More, not just finances, but more healing, more more things in our situation that we need. God knows. He knows what we need. And so we're thankful that God knows what we need even on today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift you up. We thank you for this special part of worship through giving, God. We give, God, again, not grudgingly. Bless the giver. Bless those that give an offering right now. Help them to know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Give them a sense of ease as they walk down this aisle. Give them a sense of ease and confidence, even if they push on Givelify or text to give. Help them to know that they are in relationship with you when they give. We love you, we bless you, and we magnify your name today. And even to all of our online givers, bless them even on today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are giving today, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. It's giving time in the house. We're blessed. The song says we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. In the morning, in the new day, we're blessed, we're blessed, yeah, yeah. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed in the sea.
Come on, give God some praise one more time. And even for our music ministry, we're thankful to them. Will you stand on your feet as we just go into the Word of God real quick and turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, Psalms 34. Psalms 34. If you have a Bible, say amen. amen. If you don't have one, say help me, Jesus. Amen. Sounds like most of you got it. Amen. So good to again have you all here today. And even for those online, I wanted to just go into the Bible for a quick moment as we see what the Lord has to say to us on this Sunday morning. The Bible says in verse 17, it says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and deliver them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we lift you up, we magnify your name. As we read the word of God, we know that you are the one that helps us when we cry for help. You're the one that heals us when our hearts are broken. You're the one that will help us catch our breath when we fall. You're the one that when we're in trouble, you will lift up our spirits. You're the one that will shield us in the time of storm. And you're the one that will deliver us in our darkest situation. So, Father, we look to you today. We look to your word of deliverance right now. Bless your people as we go into God's word today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's house. I'd like to reiterate that text one more time in the message version. The Bible says this. It says, is anyone crying for help? God is listening, ready to rescue you. If your heart is broken, the Bible says you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. Disciples so often get into trouble still. God is there every single time. Isn't it good to know that God is there every single time? It says he's your bodyguard, shielding you, shielding your every bone. Not every finger gets broken. The wicked commit slow suicide. They waste their lives hating the good. God pays for each slave's freedom. No one who runs to him loses out. Today I want to answer the question, and we can use this as a subject for the day. I want to answer the question, is God available right now? Is God available right now? Can somebody say this? Say, neighbor, talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor, is God available right now? You know, in our lives, I believe that we get into what I would like to call right now moments. Now, what are these moments? Maybe there are moments where you feel like you're a little overwhelmed. Maybe there are some moments where you just could use a little bit of help. Maybe there are some moments in your life where you feel like you're in a dark or lonely place. Maybe you're in a right now moment where you don't feel like the song says, it is well with my soul. You know, the list can go on and on, but the truth is we all live um, and we all go through at some point in our lives, and I'll put this on the screen, we go through what we'd like to call a right now moment. We go through a right now moment where we feel that we cannot wait, where we feel like we don't have time for faith, where we feel like we don't always have time for patience, where we may feel like if we aren't delivered right now, we aren't going to make it. So here in our text in Psalms, I believe it was David as our author, he's given us some tools for these moments in our lives, for these right now moments, if you will, to help us realize that there's hope even when you feel like you're in a hopeless situation. And as I talk today, we're going to put some key words and verses up on the screen, and I want you to show you at the end what the buildup of this is. You know, Bible study can further your life. It can bless you uh, when you do it. I want to show you how putting the pieces 
of God's word together can give you the road map and even give you some help in some uncharted waters. And please know as we talk today, I'm not going to give you a quick fix. I'm not going to sugarcoat things all the time and just give you what feels good to your ears. I want to give you something that will add life to your years. I want to give you a life giving message. So, so here's what I'm going to tell you, and later you're going to realize how assuring this statement is. I'm going to tell you, first of all, that you are not alone. That you are not alone. And see, sometimes when we're going through our right now moments, our most difficult moments, um, our assumption, our assuming grace, our, our saving grace, if you will, is simply in knowing that we're not alone. We're not alone in what we're going through. You see in our text in Psalms 34, 18, it says we have a God who is near to the brokenhearted. And he saves those who the Bible says are crushed in spirit. And I can even skip in the Bible uh, around to Psalms 23. He also promises that even in the darkest valley, even in our darkest moments, he'll be right by our side to comfort us and to guide us. Now, as you hear this text, I need you to remember that, yes, there are going to be some times when you feel alone. Yes, there's going to be some times where you're going to have those right now moments where you're going to say, where is God? But, but this is what I want you to never forget. Never forget that the peace of God, the realization that you are not alone, it's not just a feeling. It's just something that you've got to know in your spirit. It's something that you've got to know in your soul. We can put that on the screen. The power is in knowing. The power is in knowing that you, at the end of the day, that God is there. It's knowing that even if you don't understand the whys of life behind what we're going through right now, we, don't, we do know that God holds the universe in his hand. See, sometimes you've got to focus on what we do know. We know that God is good. We know that God loves us. We know that God is still in control. And God is for you and he's not against you. He promised never to leave you and never to forsake you. He's by your side. And I want to tell somebody this morning that he cares. And see, if you want to live your best life, you've got to know that. You've got to have that in your spirit. You've got to keep that in your mind. You can't let what you encounter in life bring you away from what we know. Think about this. You've got to know who God is. Now, when I think of this concept, it reminds me of the story. There was a story about a young woman who uh, brought her fiancé home to meet her parents. After dinner, her mother told her father to find out about this young man, vet him out, and let's see what he's all about. And so the father invited this young man to his study for a talk, and so he asked the young man, he said, so what are your plans for marrying my daughter? And the young man replied, he said, well, I'm a, I'm a biblical scholar, he replied. And, and so the father uh, replied back, he said, hmm, a biblical scholar, hon. And he said, he said well, that's very admirable, but, but what will you do to provide a nice house for my daughter to live in? He said this, the young man said, I will, I will study, and then God will provide for us. And how will you uh, buy her a beautiful engagement ring such as she deserved, asked the father. The young man with a straight face looked up and said, I'm going to concentrate on my studies and I, I believe God will provide for us. And children asked the father, how will you support children? Don't, don't worry, so the, sir, the young man said. He said, God will provide. And the conversation proceeded like this and each time the father questioned this young man, the young idealist, the young man insisted that God will provide. And later the mother, mother asked the husband, she said, how did it go to the father? And he, he said, honey, he said, at the end of the day, he has no job and he has no plans and he thinks I'm God. <laughs> you see, you got to be like this young man. You got to know who your provider is. Sounded like he thought it was his future father-in-law. And see, that's why this season is a great time to, to ask about and to think about the availability of God because you can't always feel that he's there. But sometimes you got to know and you got to believe it in your spirit that God is still there. 
You see, there's peace in knowing that, 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 that at the end of the day, there's some things that we know. We know, again, that God is a creator. You know, again, that God is love. You know, again, that, that God is full of mercy. You've got to know that God is full of grace. You've got to know that God is a healer. You, you've got to know that all things will work together for your good. You've got to know that this world is not our home. We are just strangers passing through. You've got to know that God promised never to leave you nor forsake you even in your darkest hour because, because when we know these things in the midst of our right now moments, if you will, it will not only help us remember uh, that God is there, but it will help us figure out what we can do to get through those moments. What we can do. What do you do when you don't understand? What do you do when you can't get over it? When you can't get over a situation? Well, well, what we can do and what we should do is, and I'll put that on the screen is, you got to lift your hands. Sometimes you got to simply lift your hands. Can somebody lift your hands today? You got to lift your hands. You got to lift your hands. Let me make it clear to you. Let me make it clear to you. Back when I was a little boy, anytime when I was scared or I got hurt or I didn't understand something or I got myself into a jam, what I would do is, is I would run to my parents because I knew that I was safe with them. I trusted that they were in control. They loved me and I trusted that they would hold me up with whatever I was facing. And even when things got very scary for me as a young boy, I could rest assured that it wasn't scary for my parents. So what could my heart do when I ran to my parents? What it could do is it could rest. It could rest because I knew that I could trust them to hold me together in my darkest moments. And see, that's how God wants us to look at him. He wants us to raise our hands, and he wants to help us through. So when we put our hands up, that's a sign that I'm not touching my problem anymore. I'm letting go, and I'm letting God. I want to ask anybody today, is there anybody here today that's willing to let go and let God handle your situation? I'm not going to touch my problem anymore because I'm going to let God handle it. And when I turned it over to the Lord, the good news is, is that he made it all right. I believe in the Bible. Somebody said, yes, he did. Can somebody say, yes, he did? In Psalms 103, verse 3, a great text, it says, the Lord is like a father to his children. He's tender. He's compassionate to those who fear him. You see, just like a good earthly father or mother, what he wants to do is he wants you to run to him, and he wants to give you any fears or any burden so he can give you the peace in your moments of challenge. See, this is what I love about the Word of God in Psalms 103, 1, another text. If you're a note taker, Psalms 103, verse 1, it says, His love is unconditional. Unconditional. Which means you can't lose it no matter how bad you mess up. <laughs> Psalms 86, 15, and we can throw that on the screen. It says, His love is patient. His love is kind. He doesn't get angry at you or annoyed when you have questions. His love cares. He knows the storms you go through. He even knows the good that can come from it in the future. And so what do you and so what does he want you to do? Like a scared child in a tough moment. He wants you to run to him. He wants you to run to the Father. So when you don't understand, you got to lift your hands. And he'll be right there to comfort you. Now, another way I want you to get through those right now moments, and, and we're going to put that back up. We said you're not alone. The power is in knowing that, that you're not alone. So lift your hands and give it over to God. But you've got to also bow your head. In other words, you've got to surrender to God. And you know, when I think of surrendering, it takes me to the Acts 16 text in the New Testament of the Bible. In Acts 16, you can read it this week. It's an incredible story. It talks about uh, two missionaries named Paul and Silas, and they were traveling preachers, if you will. And they got thrown into jail. And now, now while in jail, and instead of being down and depressed and instead of giving up on God, what did they do? They surrendered to God. They bowed their head and they started praying and singing praises unto God. I don't know about you, but there's something happens when I pray unto God. 
There's something that happens when I turn it over to the Lord. There's something that happens when I praise God. Do I have any praises in the audience today that know that when you give God some praise, when you put a praise in your mouth, that's when God will deliver in the nick of time. Sometimes you got to bow your head and surrender unto God, pray unto God, talk to God, and give God some praise. Is there anybody in this place that can give God a few seconds of praise, even in this place, even right now? Is there anybody in this place that was healed? You better give God some praise right now. There's somebody in this place. You, you wouldn't have been here today if it wasn't been for God's grace and God's mercy. 2023, we would have been talking about what you was or where you were, but you're here today and you're standing because of God's grace. So in the house of the Lord, somebody ought to give God some praise in this place. Praise. That's your breakthrough. Praise. That's what God needs from you. Praise. Somebody say praise. Praise. You may be seated. Praise. So they surrendered and they bowed their head and they started praying and singing praises unto God. And you know what? The moment they did this, a great earthquake came and shake the foundation of the jail. Shake the foundation of the jail so much that the doors to the jail busted open and the chains on everybody, not just Paul and Silas. The Bible says the chains on everybody in the jail, the chains on your neighbor, the chains on your family members, the chains on the people around you. In this story, the chains were unloosed when they turned it over to the Lord. Their circumstance, and we can put that on the screen, it changed for the better. Paul and Silas, when they went into the jail, I'm sure they felt like all hope was gone. I'm sure they felt like they were in a midnight situation. I'm sure they felt like they were finished. I'm sure they felt like, where is God? God is not here. But they didn't sit there. They didn't just sit on what they felt. What they did was they depended on what they knew. If I can give you a message today, don't sit on what you feel today. Don't sit on what's, what you're feeling. Sometimes you got to sit on what you know. See, that's what faith is all about. It's about sitting on what you know. They knew God, and they knew that the best way to get to God was to bow their heads and pray and praise Him through the pain. They couldn't see the big picture. They could only see the right now moment. They could only see that they were stuck in the prison. They could only see that it was hopeless on today. But I want to tell you, it may be hopeless on today, but God can turn it around on tomorrow. God can change it on tomorrow. Yet, what did they do in their situation? They chose to praise God anyhow. Are you willing through what you're going through to praise God anyhow? Are you willing to clap your hands anyhow? Are you willing to stump your feet anyhow? Are you willing to wave your hands anyhow? Are you willing to bow your head and humble yourselves unto the Lord anyhow? Is there anybody in this place that's willing to surrender to God anyhow? Anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. They chose to pray. And even in the midst, even in the midst of a gall, a cold, a dark, and a dirty prison, they chose to surrender and bow their heads. And you know what happened? It made all the difference. It made all the difference in their situation. And, and see, the good news in this story is that whatever you may be walking through right now, it may seem hopeless, it may seem confusing, it may not be clear, but we serve a God that Paul and Silas did. We serve the same God, the same God of Paul and Silas. And he saw it in their situation. And I want to tell you, if God saw it in their situation, that means that God will see it in your situation. If God delivered them, I believe that God can deliver you. Because the truth of the matter is God sees the big picture. See, we can't always see what's ahead. We can't always see what's going to come. We can't even always see sometimes what we're going through. But what the enemy meant for evil, 
I want to tell you, God can turn it around for your good. What the enemy meant that would take you out. God can turn you into a living testament of what his grace and what his mercy can do for you. Maybe I'm talking to somebody that's been through some stuff. Maybe I'm talking to some folk that was sick. Anybody ever told you, doctor ever told you, you wasn't going to make it, but you're standing here today. Anybody ever thought you were going to be dead and gone, but you're still alive today. That's who I'm talking to today. At the end of the day, what the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it around for your good. But we have to do this. We have to choose faith sometimes over our feelings and lift our hands, lift our hands, lift our hands and surrender to God. And then what we got to do, we got to bow our head to the Father. See, there's power in prayer. There's breakthrough in prayer. In your right now moments, lift your hands. In your right now moments, bow your head and see that's how you're going to get by in 2023. That's how you're going to make it through this year. I believe it was Isaiah who said this, and we can put that up on the screen. Isaiah 54:10 says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. You have to remember that God has also made a covenant of peace with us. Now this peace doesn't mean that there won't be any storms. This peace doesn't mean that you won't go through any problems. But this peace is an assurance that you're not alone in the storm. This peace is an assurance that you're not alone in the darkness. Truth of the matter is you are not forsaken. You are not abandoned. You are not deserted in your right now moments. These are just moments when we have to do as Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, that we've got to be strong. We've got to be courageous. And we cannot be afraid because the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, in some situations we may encounter fear. We may encounter dread about our circumstances, but be encouraged that in those right now moments, these moments where you need God, I believe that God is right there. I believe he's in the midst, and as I close, there is a concept where God is reminding me of the story. There's a story about a young man. He had been raised an atheist. He was a person who basically didn't believe in God. And as the story goes, that he was training to be an Olympic diver and the only religious influence in his life came from an outspoken friend of his. And he happened to be a minister. His friend happened to be a minister and the young di diver. He really didn't pay much attention to his friend. He didn't pay attention to his friend's sermons, but, but he heard them often in his spirit. And this story goes on to say that one night, the diver, he went into an indoor pool at the college that he attended. And he walked into this big room and the, the lights were all off, but the pool had these big skylights and the moon was bright and it was shining into the room. And so there was plenty of light for him to practice his diving skills. And so this young man, he climbed up to the highest diving board in the, in the, in the, in the room and he, he turned his back to the pool and went to the edge of the board and he extended himself out and he saw his shadow on the wall in front of him. And the shadow of his body was in the shape of a cross. And at the end of the day, looking at the figure in the shadows, something hit him. And instead of diving, he knelt down on that board and asked God to come into his life. After that life-changing moment, as that young man stood up from his knees on that diving board, a maintenance man walked into the room. And the maintenance man turned on all the lights and come to find out that the pool was drained for repairs. I don't know about you, but in this life, you better be ready for what's ahead of you. You better be ready for the tests that come your way. And even like this young man in the story who at first didn't know God, God showed him a sign that I'm available to you. And it saved his life in his right now moments. So let us not forget. Stand with me today. Let us not forget. Let us not forget that you are never alone. 
And there is power in knowing that when you lift your hands and bow your head and surrender to God, your circumstances will change for the better. If you believe it today, I want you to give God the biggest praise in this house. Let us bow our heads today. Let us talk to God if there's anybody in this place. I don't want anybody to leave here without being saved today. To anyone here today, anybody who's even watching us online, I want to ask you an important question, one that we should always revisit. If your heart were to stop beating, in the next few minutes, are you at peace with God? Are you clear on what would happen to you once you leave this earth today? If not, what I want to do is I want to have the opportunity to pray with you even right now. We aren't here to look down on anyone. We aren't here to, to make you feel bad. We want to let you know we care about you. And I want to help you to start a new chapter in your life. Today can be the best day of your life. Today can be a new beginning. And all you have to do is pray this simple prayer with me. And even those who have said it before, we can always say it again. We can whisper it together. The prayer is this, and you can repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me right now. I choose to follow you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and you rose from the grave on the third day. Come into my heart right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer for the first time, I want you to fill out that card in the pew. There's a card in the pew in front of you. Or you can go to the connect desk in the back. You can fill out that card. And if you fill it out, I want you to put it in the receptacle right at the door. Or you can go online to mcov.org. Let us know more about your journey. And we want to bring you in even on today. And even if you need special prayer as we go into our closing prayer, raise your hand if you need special prayer right now. And we're going to pray right now. Let us bow our heads, everybody in this place. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We pray right now for those raised hands here today. We pray that whatever they need, God, you give them a sense of ease in knowing that you will deliver right now. I pray for healing. I pray for breakthrough, God. We are bowing unto the Father. We are surrendering to you. We believe that where two or three are gathered, you're in the midst of it, God. So we love you. We magnify you and praise your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give them some praise today. And consider yourselves dismissed. I'm living the blessed life.